Have you ever really watched Scooby-Doo? I mean, really watched it. If you have, they're probably just as confused as I have been. Usually a standard Scooby-Doo episode starts with the gang driving somewhere and a monster appears, though usually not where anyone can really see it. Instead, it just lurks in the shadows, growling and hissing, and generally acting like a monster. This is the first stumbling block where we have the logic in the Scooby-Doo universe. Why exactly would anyone want to do this? Oh sure, if they were actually monsters, it would make sense. But these aren't monsters. These are people in monster costumes. Yet, here they are, prowling around in the dark, acting like monsters, when there's no one around to actually see them. Certainly, it's possible that one or two are method actors that really get into the role, but that can't be true for all of them. Speaking of staying in character, the monsters, or rather people in the monster costumes, rarely ever break character. The mystery gang never stumbles upon a monster acting remotely like a person underneath the mask, and even when Scooby and Shaggy pull their little, let's pretend we're barbers stick, the monster goes along with their act at least for a little bit before realizing, hey, I'm supposed to be a monster. Even when the monster's being tricked, it doesn't act like a human. Perhaps the biggest mystery in Scooby-Doo is Scooby-Doo himself. Why does this dog talk? Nobody remarks on this in the show, but clearly talking dogs are a rarity. As far as I can tell, the only talking dogs in, in the Scooby mythos are the Scooby clan themselves. One can't help but wonder why. Why do the mystery gang keep on running across monsters in the first place? Surely this can't be a mere coincidence. It's as if fate itself is drawing over the intrepid gang of teens into these strange adventures. Indeed, it is, as we soon shall see. The secrets of Scooby-Doo begun long before the show even starts, perhaps long before the Scooby clan was even born. My theory is that, at some point in the past, a person performed a spell that brought dark magic into this earth. This magic manifests itself into these cursed monster costumes. That's right, cursed monster costumes. It's a sensible explanation. How else can you explain that these com costumes are just so realistic and that they can simulate anything ranging from an evil bug from the future to a 10,000 volt ghost or a tar monster? Think about this for a moment and don't simply write me off, just be open-minded. How can anyone take a wetsuit and a car battery and make themselves an electric monster? Or a tar beast. It's just flat out impossible. Not possible. At least without some magic on your side. These costumes were sped around the earth by a sinister force every so often. A person of questionable moral fiber discovers them. The costumes are used for their powers to coerce these vulnerable souls. If the soul is vulnerable enough, the idea of running around in a monster costume to frighten people actually completely makes sense. Compelled by the dark forces, the person puts on the costume and actually becomes the monster. This is why they never break character. This is why they enjoy lurking around in the darkened woods. This is why they can manifest surprising powers such as super strength. It's the magic that makes this happen. And over time, the costumes become more controlling and the ev eventual goal is to transform the person from a costume into a genuine monster. Often by the time Scooby and the gang get involved, this is dangerously close to happening. This is why, even when caught, the monsters rarely admit defeat. It's only after their mask has been removed that their humanity is exposed and the spell is broken, and they become human once again. Here's a twist. What does this have to do with anything about Scooby-Doo, you might ask? The entire Doo family is cursed. I don't know why. I don't know if they had anything to do with the magic that was unleashed with the costumes, or if they just happened to make some powerful enemies. Either way, they're cursed into searching the world for these monsters. This is evident by the sliding scale of humanity exhibi exhibited by this Doo family. As for Shaggy, Velma, and Fred, and Dalphine. Daphne, I haven't quite figured out their place in this battle. 
Perhaps they're merely along for the ride, thrill seekers, or maybe they're genuinely good people out to stop the forces of darkness. Or perhaps there's a more sinister purpose at this work. A truly terrifying secret that we dare not explore at this stage. Looking at you, Fred and Daphne. <laughs> but that is for another time.